Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And the Spanish government is now studying legal ways to stop one of the country's biggest companies from moving its headquarters to the Netherlands. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that have supported the channel recently. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the Spanish government is currently looking at legal ways to keep construction giant Ferrovial in Spain. As we can read here, Spain seeks right to stop Ferrovial from moving to the Netherlands. Spain is examining whether it can force Ferrovial to seek cabinet approval for the infrastructure group's decision to move its head office to the Netherlands, deepening a conflict between the socialist government and one of the country's biggest companies. A senior Spanish official said the government was looking at whether it could use a takeover law to make Ferrovial seek official approval for its plan, which has been described as a betrayal by the Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez. Ferrovial, which partially owns London's Heathrow Airport and is valued at about 20 billion euros, shocked Spain last week by saying it would shift its head office to the Netherlands in order to facilitate the listing of its shares on the New York stock market. The company wants to merge its Madrid-based parent company into a wholly owned subsidiary, Ferrovial International, which has been based in the Netherlands since 2018. So, there we go. The Spanish government not happy with the decision announced last week by the that construction company that they were going to leave Spain, move their headquarters to the Netherlands for various reasons, and the Prime Minister here in Spain and various ministers of the current government have criticised the company, and as we saw there, calling it a betrayal to Spain. So the question now is, will Spain succeed or not in legally stopping Ferrovial from leaving the country? Time will tell. Now, as we know, the EU recently announced that petrol and diesel cars will no longer be sold in the European Union from 2035 onwards. But as we also know, both Germany and Italy are threatening to throw a spanner in the works of that plan. And now the Spanish government has come out and said that it's unhappy with Germany's plan. As we can read here, Spain disappointed by by Germany's last-minute challenge to car ban. Germany may set a dangerous precedent by challenging a European Union agreement to phase out new combustion engine cars starting in 2035, a Spanish deputy prime minister said. Modifying the proposal so late in the debate could disrupt the way the bloc crafts key policies in the future and send confusing signals to investors and industries planning for the shift to clean energy, Teresa Rivera said in an interview. Germany, where auto manufacturing is the cornerstone of the economy, Economy, asked the EU executive arm to exempt cars powered by synthetic fuels, throwing a wrench into an already agreed upon plan to reduce carbon emissions. Italy subsequently joined Berlin in threatening to derail the ban, with the government of Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni arguing it makes little sense and puts thousands of jobs at risk. So just when Europe thought everybody was on board with this new plan, Germany and Italy say that they don't want to take part. And the reason, as we know, is because that's where a lot of European cars are made, in Germany and in Italy. So we'll keep an eye on this one going forward because it's going to become very, very interesting indeed over the next decade or so. Now, Spain's finance minister has been making headlines this week, but for all the wrong reasons. Because at the weekend, she came out with a controversial statement saying that grandparents here in Spain do not want their pensions for themselves. The PSOE's Deputy Secretary General and Finance Minister Maria Jesus Montero praised pensions in Spain on Sunday, describing them as the best distributed salary that families can have. She did so at a PSOE public event in Osuna, Seville, in which she even pointed out that grandfathers and grandmothers do not want pensions for themselves, but for their children and grandchildren. As I always say, as Minister of Finance, pensions are the money, the best distributed salary that families can have, because grandparents do not want pensions for themselves, the minister said. It is helped to pay the electricity bill for a son who cannot pay for electricity. It is help to go to the supermarket to buy five things that his daughter cannot buy. It is the help that our grandfathers and grandmothers give to our young people so that they can go out at weekends or buy their trainers, she added. So some controversial words there from the finance minister, Ms. Montero. And let's just say that a lot of pensioner groups in this country are not happy with what she said. Pensions, the money that has been put aside for these workers throughout their working lives is not for them, according to the finance minister, but should be spent 
spent on children to help them pay their electricity bills if they can't get a job or to help pay for grandchildren's trainers if the parents can't afford to buy them for their own kids. So my advice for the finance minister would be fix the economy so that people can get jobs and pay for things themselves and let pensioners enjoy their pensions. Of course, if they want to help their kids and grandkids out, no problem, that's fine. But don't suggest that it should be what they do with that pension. And finally, when it comes to rising supermarket prices here in Spain, one supermarket's on the front foot. And as we can see here, Eroski will launch a campaign this month to facilitate savings for consumers with price adjustments. Eroski will launch a commercial campaign this month to make it easier for consumers to make savings, which will include a price adjustment sources from the cooperative group have confirmed to Europa Press. This initiative is part of the commercial campaign Festa que enamora, which the company plans to present next Monday in Madrid. Eroski plans to launch this campaign this month as part of its commitment to making savings easier for consumers. So it sounds like a good initiative from the supermarket chain Eroski. Adjust prices to facilitate savings for consumers. And let's see if other supermarket chains in this country follow Eroski's lead. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from George. Regarding the 400,000 extra unemployed, what is the total unemployed in Spain now? Yeah, Roy, thanks for the comment. And in relation to a piece of news that we saw yesterday, that some 400,000 extra unemployed people have been found in this country. The central government here in Spain a couple of years ago changed the contracting system for workers, or at least they changed the name of some of the contracts, getting rid of temporary contracts and changing the name to permanent discontinuous, whatever that means. The Labour Minister, Yolanda Diaz, has been saying since then that employment figures were improving, but apparently that was not the case. And if we have a look at employment figures here in Spain for January 2023, we can see that the total unemployment rate is 13%, 11.5% percent for men, 14.6 percent for women. And when it comes to youth unemployment for those under the age of 25, it sits at 29.6 percent. And it'll be interesting to see what March employment figures look like with those extra 400,000 people added. So whatever the official unemployment figures are in March, unemployment is still the biggest problem in this country, in my opinion. Another comment here from CL Man: Aside from airport hassles, the fly from Madrid to Lisbon, the round trip cost is worth it. Counting the cost of petrol and the driving stress for six hours, the airfare comes out on top against more cost and stress. As for the train ride, obviously there is a cost, not to mention being confined in a train for nine hours. You be the judge. Yes, CL, thanks for the comment. And this was a comment that popped up on yesterday's live stream. Somebody said, what is the best way to travel from Madrid to Lisbon? Is it better to go by train or by car? Those were the two options. But I suggested that perhaps you need to look at traveling by air if you want to get there quickly and cheaply. Yes, you can drive, but petrol's expensive nowadays. And as CL points out, you've got that added stress. And the train option sounds great, but remember that there's no fast train between Madrid and Lisbon. There should be. There should be a train that takes around two and a half, three hours, but there's not. And the current train time is around nine hours or perhaps even more. It depends. So jump on a plane to Madrid, get to Lisbon quickly. And if you want to explore Portugal by car, hire one at the airport. One here from Janet, an enjoyable chat, Stuart. I think little is very good for fruit and veg. It seems to be cheaper than other supermarkets. I don't know about the wine as I have never bought any from Lidl. Simply because I only buy organic wine, it is better in the sense that it is free from any chemicals, which is my preference. Thank you. Yeah, Janet, thanks for the comment. And this is another topic that popped up on yesterday's live stream. Somebody asked me why I don't shop at Lidl. I said that I don't go there primarily because they don't have a very good range when it comes to fresh meat and fish. They don't have a butcher. They don't have a fishmonger. Everything there in those products is sold in packets, which I don't really like. Fruit and veg is good, which Janet points out there. And some people have said that the wine selection at Lidl is also very, very good. I don't know what the situation's like when it comes to organic wine, but I'll take Janet's word for it. Thanks. Another comment here from Makish. Tap water in Spain in general seems to be a major issue. I made the mistake by drinking some out of the tap in a Valencian hotel. Never again. 
there is such a disparity across Europe when it comes to tap water quality. Yeah, Makish, thanks for the comment. And not only is there a disparity when it comes to tap water quality around Europe, but also here in Spain. For example, here in Madrid, tap water quality is very good in my opinion. But a couple of weeks ago when I went to Murcia, the tap water seemed terrible. If you live in a part of Spain that has snow-capped mountains close by or has regular rainfall, most likely you will get high quality drinking water. But if you live in a place that doesn't, I imagine the water will be pretty bad. But we'll open the question up to the community. What's the drinking water like in your part of Spain? Let us know in the comment section below. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments also, please leave them in that section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.